All right, guys, uh, we're about to drop the S10. Uh, we got a four inch lowering kit all the way around, which should bring us down about as far as I kind of want to take it without having to cut anything, uh, you know, no C-notching or anything like that. So a four inch drop is where we're gonna start. And right now it is sitting at stock height and we're gonna go through this. Hopefully we don't run into any problems. I mean, it's, the truck's 24 years old, so a lot of these components probably haven't been taken apart in 24 years. So there's going to be a lot of um, PB blaster and some knocking on some bolts. And hopefully there's no torching or cutting. But at this point, it's probably pretty likely. All right, just as a reference, here it is at stock height. Uh, that is a pretty big damn gap between the top of the tire and the fender. We're gonna try to bring that down about three, four inches. Uh, it's just a Beltec drop kit for this. So hopefully that gap right there, that big ass gap, let's go and get rid of it. Okay, so the first step, we just, we're jacking it up. We're getting it on jack stand so it's safe. And I'm leaving the jack under here just as a safety precaution. And we pulled the wheel off. We don't have to explain how to do that. Just ignore that big two gauge power cable coming out of that. It's for another project. Uh, now the next step is to start tearing this off so that we can gain access to the hub and then the shock and the spring behind there. Went ahead and PB blasted everything that's going to have to come off from tie rod to ball joint. Everything, even the, the shock assembly and the caliper. Uh, everything just looked, it's, it's really not that bad. Like you can see the cotter pins in good shape and everything, but, uh, just seemed more intelligent to knock all the rust off and use some PB blaster and, uh, you know, lay the bolts out and then tap them with a hammer, which is basically what you do with PB blaster. You put it in there, it penetrates the bolt and, it's supposed to break the rust down and the corrosion between the threads. So doing that and letting it sit overnight and then we'll get back into it. And look, it started to look at this the truck's old. It's uh, the rotors are in decent shape, but the brake pads will probably I'll go ahead and swap them out because we're going to have to pull this caliper first, pull the caliper off, tie it up, get the brake lines out of the way because when this whole assembly drops, uh, there's not enough brake line to be able to drop it down to get, the spring and shock out so may as well go ahead and replace the brake pads while we're doing it all right so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull the the bolts out at the back here and then pull the caliper off uh went ahead and got brake pads we're going to swap brake pads out they're really not awful i mean they're not good but we may as well do that as we pull this out and then we're going to tie it up so that it's out of the way when we go to drop all this stuff down all right, so we got the caliper up. It's tied up over here out of the way, so there's no pressure on the brake lines. Uh, the next thing is going to be to get the tie rod open, and we got to pull this cotter pin out first. And the first thing we're going to do is clean this up with a briar brush so that we have access to the cotter pin. Uh, but right now you can see all the grease and 24 years of shits, basically piled up on there. So I need to clean this up before we move any further. So the cotter pin actually broke off. Uh, and what we're going to do is just loosen this up, but not take the bolt off. That way we can hit this thing and loosen it and drop it down. So Now it's loose and we can get the tie rod out without having to bang on anything. So we'll go ahead and take that uh, all the way loose, but I don't want to drop it off just yet. All right. So the next step is the sway bar link here. And I started to break it loose uh, and the bolt snapped off. So I'm, I was going to replace these anyway, uh, the sway bar bolts that basically connect. See here, they connect back to the sway bar and the bushings and everything seem fine. So, but we are going to replace these bolts. It broke off. We're going to hold it there for now. The next thing is to get the ball joint 
bolt ready. And as you can see, there's another cotter pin in here on this one. So I've already loosened it on the other side. We're basically just going to pull the cotter pin out. If you can see it. All right, so we are actually putting in a new set of drop shocks along with everything else. So the next step is actually going to be dropping the old shock out and then uh, we're going to use it when we do the spring. So I think it's just going to make life easier since we are replacing the shock to go ahead and take the shock out at this point so that we can easily remove the spring. Top bolt here on the shock is here underneath the flap and if you can see there's like a flat spot on the top so we're going to use a set of vice grips to hold that and then uh, we'll start loosening it underneath and hopefully this thing's going to come out and not cause me any problems if it is uh, we'll just have to cut the old shock bolt off hopefully that doesn't come to that but we'll see okay so this top shock bolt is seized and as you can see the top edge of it is starting to round out and I can't get on it with vice grips. So we're gonna have to use a Sawzall and actually cut the top. But before we do that, underneath we have the, where they at? The two bolts for the bottom of the shock. We're gonna go ahead and take those two bolts out first just to make sure I'm not running into any more troubles before I start dealing with uh, cutting the top bolt off. Scary, but effective. Ah! God damn it. So, this broke on the other side you can kind of see one is in pieces and the other is intact so now I'm gonna have to cut yet another bolt I'm worried about the ABS brake line, the sensor line that comes down. And if I've got to drop this out of the way to get the spring in, this is the next, the ball joint right here has to come out. And there's a cotter pin. As you can see it, there's a cotter pin right there that needs pulled out of this joint. And then we're gonna hammer this and drop it. But I've got the jack under it now to support the weight. So we'll go from there. All right, we got 22 millimeter socket. And I've already broken this loose. Cotter pins out. And the nut is cleaned up and ready. Now it's just a matter of dropping the joint. It's free. Okay, now it's not going to go anywhere because I've still got the jack under it. And again, I'm really concerned about the ABS. And I've got everything loose, but at this point, I still need to disconnect the tie rod.
I've got support. Let's go ahead and take sway bar off. Just so there's no issues. There it goes. Pop free. Got the nut. Alright, so. Here's my cable that I'm concerned about. Ah, definitely not enough space. All right, so ended up pulling these out. Instead of cutting them and having to redo everything, I just pulled the ABS line out of these brackets and bent them up. Um, so we can put them back when we're done and then just crimp it back now. Uh, I ended up having to take this bolt out here uh, to release even more tension on the ABS line. How much slack do I have? Plenty. Decent amount, yeah. Oh, that's kind of scary. Son of a bitch! I didn't break anything, but goddamn, that hurt. All right. Jesus. Spring's out. All right, so the spring is out. There's the stock spring. Um, it is beefy, and there's the the shorter aftermarket drop spring. And trying ripping it out, and then looking at it and going, "What if we just cut the stock spring?" to be able to come down a little bit. So that's been the, uh, that's been the decision. Should I cut the stock spring or put the aftermarket ones in? And it's, it's less coils. It's not as beefy. I think it's gonna compress a little bit more. And those stock springs, 24 years old, they look pretty rough. So I'm gonna hold on to the stock springs. And uh, if, We'll give it a week after we get these in, after we get everything done. We'll give it a week. And if I'm not happy, then we're cutting them motherfuckers. We're cutting them. If we have to. And putting the cut ones back in. Or maybe we'll just cut these further than what they are. We'll see. But that's where we're at. Now it's time to put this whole thing back together with the new springs in it. We're just shoving the new spring in. We're gonna. I'm going to try to clean this up as best I can. And then put the new spring in, seat it, and uh, start putting this whole thing back together. And then hopefully we're still waiting on the uh, sway bar nuts to come in because that is busted, snapped off before we can put all this back together. Uh, I shit you not, as soon as I turn the camera off, FedEx guy just walked up with everything I need to put the sway bars back. Okay, linkage and nuts and everything are here, so this is getting done today. Okay, so we got the rubber boots back on the spring. This is the new spring. Mm-hmm.
put the ABS brake lines back in. If I can get up into here. This has got to come out to allow new to go in. Uh, the original shocks were blown. These are actual drop shocks uh, that will go up in there. And I've had this in and out of the tower already a, a couple of times, so it's starting to get a bit scratched up. The grommet and the washer and everything's off. So this will go up through the new spring. And then on the tower, the cap and the grommet and cap goes on the top. But the way this mounts underneath is you see these bolts. At the bottom of the tower, there's these little things called speed nuts or U-nuts, depending upon where you live. And uh, what a speed nut looks like, it's this. And it clips onto the metal. It clips onto the metal of the tower. And then this goes up through and you run a bolt and stainless steel bolt and washer up through this. So basically just replacing all of this stuff. Uh, if you know we're doing this 24 years of dirt and grime and rust and corrosion, it's pretty much just got to swap all this stuff out. All right, so this is it. This is the last one. All right, so we got the shock in. Now we're going to do now is tighten the shock up. And we do it until we can start to see it twist. We're going to lock it down with the second nut. in bottom bolts are locked top bolts are locked spring is in torsion bars down just double checking everything to make sure everything's back where it's supposed to be now it's a matter of just putting the wheel back on here it is at stock height. God, I'm gonna need a technic shot by the time this is all done. Did you cut yourself? I'm scratching myself on all this rusty shit.